So I was browsing the internet earlier and I saw somebody asking this question on one of the Blender forums. How can you turn this image into something like this, a 3D representation that can be printed on a 3D printer if you don't have any sculpting skills? So the way I would recommend to do it in that scenario is if you go into Blender, go into the preferences and then just type in images. Make sure you check images as planes and this will allow you to, if you press the shift A button to bring in an image under the image menu, images as planes, choose your image you want to work with, that you want to convert. And if you just turn on the overlays to texture mode, you can see it's brought that image in on a plane. What we'll do now is we're going to displace it using that image. So we're going to the modifiers and we're going to add a subdivision surface and give this 10. And we'll just change it to simple mode. Although that did look quite good. But anyway, simple mode. And you can see now if we turn off optimal display, we've got a huge amount, well, not a huge amount, but we've got a, a nice amount of detail. So I'm going to apply this, Control A. We'll come back in solid mode. We'll turn off the texture, we don't need to see that. We'll add a displacement modifier. And we'll click new and choose to use UV coordinates. So it uses the same coordinates as the image. Click on this little icon to show the texture tab. And make sure it's set to type as image or movie. And we've got the image in the scene now because the images planes texture uh, add-on brought that in. So if you click on this drop down, we can choose test image. So that's way too much. We go back to the modifier and turn this to 0 0.006 or something like that. The more subdivisions, the more detail you're going to get, but this is fine for the demonstration purposes. I'm going to apply this and I'm going to go in sculpt mode. So tab and then sculpt mode. And what I want to do is make sure that I can't move any of the details around on the X and Y axis. So I need to lock those by going to the tool section. Under the symmetry, just click on X and Y to lock those. And now using the blob tool, we can actually bring up the areas that should be raised. Because if we use the displacement from a texture, it's going to use the dark and uh, light areas. Light areas will be raised and dark areas will be low. But obviously for things like this cross, that was dark. So that's been pushed backwards, um, which we don't want. So all we're going to do now is go around the model with the blob tool on, right click, Turn Magnify off to make sure the vertices don't um, get scrunched up. We'll turn the strength down to make it easier to work with. And what we can do now is we can start drawing the bits that need to be raised up. And if there are bits that need to be lowered, we can hold Control and do the same thing. So bring up the cheeks, bring up that nose area. We'll probably bring it in around here. And just work through it doing this until you're happy with, with the result. I'm not going to do a great job. I just want to demonstrate the, the principle of the technique. So I'll do a very basic job. And when you get to areas like this, just keep in mind the perspective because things like the little finger here would be closer to the viewer than the finger at the back. So you might like to just make this raise a little bit more than those back fingers. And you can change the size of the brush with the F and you can change the fall off with Shift F. And when you get to areas like this that are straight, you've got two options. You can either turn on Stabilize Stroke, which will give you a line. The, the higher you set the radius, the, the easier it will be to draw straight lines. If that's still a bit too tricky, you can change it to Line. And then you can just draw the line, and then when you let go, it will draw. Etc. 
So I'm not going to do a great job. I just wanted to show you the principle of, of this method. And once you've finished, you need to uh, get it ready for printing. So you could use a solidify modifier, but the problem is it's going to it's going to mess up the the look of it on the back. So if you want it to be sort of you know look nice on the back as well as the front, rather than using the solidify modifier, which is going to do this sort of thing, and it will get worse the more you uh, the thicker you make it. We'll get rid of that, and we'll go into edit mode. What we can do, we can press number two to select edge mode, and then we'll choose select, select loops, and then boundary loop. That will select the outer edge. And we can E, Z to extrude downwards a bit. And at this point, we can either fill it, so we can press the F key, and that will solidify it. But if we want this same pattern on the back, what we could do instead so press control three, so it's going to select those faces which are connected to the bounding edge. We'll press control I to select the top faces, the original faces. We'll do shift D to duplicate them. And then we're going to move them down on by pressing G and then Z. We'll bring that down until it's aligned approximately there. And then we can select everything and then do select loops boundary loops and that will select both of those boundary loops and now we can right click and we can try and do a bridge where is it do control e and then bridge edge loops there we are and you can see it's bridged those edge loops now so it's a solid object and you might just want to um, check that the normals are correct because these bottom normals are probably going to be wrong i'm not sure if that makes a difference to 3d printing but if it does you can do that, you can fix that by turning on face orientation and then just press number three, select everything and then just do a shift N. And that will ensure everything's facing outward. And then you've got a nice look on the back, the same as on the front. And that's one way you could do it until you've uh, picked up adequate sculpting skills to, uh, you know, do a really nice job. but. For a starter, that's not a bad result. I mean, that is a bad result, but if, you, if you're more careful than I was, then you should get a nice result. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.